I'm Lauren Davis and I am the curator here at the Old State Capitol. I think the first time I walked into this building after getting a job here, it was such a different experience than having seen it before and it's like I take it for granted sometimes that I get to work in this incredibly beautiful building. I think it's the location, the rich history, and I, I feel like I'm getting to be part of the history, especially in the work I do with creating exhibits that you know have hopefully a lasting impact that people will remember an exhibit or remember something they learned. So I kind of feel like I'm a little bit a part of the historical record now of this building, which is really cool. I, I really love what we do here. I think I love seeing when people first walk into the building, maybe they either haven't been here before or haven't been here in a really long time. And it's like their eyes open wide and they literally feel a sense of magic. And I think that most people are so proud of this building. Um, it's just a really cool aspect to our landscape um, along the river in Baton Rouge. And it's so unique. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's the most unique building in our state. Um, and it has such a rich history. And so I think the community is proud to be able to say it's here in Baton Rouge. And also they get to learn really interesting things when they come here. It's not just about looking at, you know, the, the beautiful architecture and the, the lovely stained glass, but they can learn a little bit about um, our political systems and how government impacts literally every part of our life. But it's not just government coming down on them that we're always a part of it. Every single one of us is a part of creating this democracy that we have and we like to, you know, that, that's included in our mission, so we like to be able to impart that. And my favorite artifact, and I sound like a big nerd when I say this, but um, we have a model that was made of um, a, a statue um, and it's a huge monumental statue that's in New Orleans. It's of Bienville with two fellow people that helped Bienville essentially found and set up New Orleans. Um, the model itself was hand sculpted by Angela Gregory, who's a pretty famous um, female sculptor in our history. Um, and she brought it with her to Paris to have the final bronze huge um, memorial completed and then brought it back and now it's in New Orleans. Um, but the story about it was interesting, the, this particular model that we have, which is probably life size, I mean, in terms of our human life size, but not as big as the, the final piece. Um, it was saved from New Orleans after Katrina and it was stored for a long time. And I had heard about it needing a home in a museum when I first started here in 2014. And so I pursued getting it because Bienville was such, such an important political figure in um, Louisiana's history, being a governor, a colonial governor for so long. And I thought it would just be the perfect place, even though he wasn't a colonial governor in this building, of course, um, but you know, the, the history behind it. My other favorite exhibits that I did, as far as like exhibit rather than just an artifact, was uh, several years ago, well, for 2020, um, and we extended it beyond because of COVID, but we had a women's rights history. So it was the first time I personally delved into the history of women's rights in Louisiana. And it was a story that I didn't know. Um, and even though we don't have it up permanently, it's something we can always bring out again. But it was really interesting and fun to see all of the work that women did to get the right to vote. And it was the 100th anniversary of that in 2020. And women were here in this very building petitioning and fighting and having what they called pageants and, you know, basically assemblies on our grounds and inside here to bring attention to their desire to have the right to vote. And as I was doing it all, um, I discovered uh, that a family member of mine had a copy of our, let's, I guess it would be my great, great, great grandmother's um, application to vote, which she literally did within days of getting the right to vote. And I mean, in my mind, probably rushed out, you know, to New Orleans where she was living and, and filled out the application, um, and, you know, so that she could vote. And she was an older woman at that point, so she must have been waiting for so long. And I was able to add a copy of that to the exhibit. So it was so personal to me, you know, that I got to learn about something that impacted me as a woman, but also, you know, what my family got to do. Yeah. Had a few memorable moments. I've been here for 10 years now, but I think one of the things that stood out to me the most when I thought about this was um, we had an exhibit a few years ago 
about Coney Island, which sounds odd, but it was more about the concept of, of play and you know coming together and, and, and in amusing ways and things like that. So we did a really cool program where we had a family day and we had different activities based on the themes. And we actually had acrobats and people that would hang from ribbons and <laughs> do tumbles from the air. And, and we set them up in the house. So we have these amazing images, both in my mind, but also physical images of people all the way up to the top of the extremely tall windows in the house chamber, just tumbling and flipping from ribbons and swinging and catching or seen anything like it. I don't think we've ever had anything like that here before or since. So yeah, it was a really cool experience.